My name is Bill Fisher. This demo covers animating in Adobe After Effects. All right, here is my timeline in my After Effects file with the file imported. First thing I want to do is figure out where I want the items to be when I start animating in frame one. I think that I'm going to move these out a little bit, get them to a position that I like, because this to me is the money shot. I want to make sure that I have this particular frame in the animation. Next, I'm going to anchor the position of each element in frame one in the timeline. So I'm going to open up the layer. I'm going to have this transform button, and I open that up. And I'm going to select all these little stopwatches. That puts a keyframe right here in frame one. And I'm going to do that for every object. What that does is no matter what I do further on down the timeline, in frame one, this position will be fixed. Once I have every object anchored in their position in frame one, I can ask myself if there's anything else I would like to adjust before I get started. And I do. I want to make the clouds uh, lighter, and I can do that with opacity. So this is the left small cloud. I opened it up and under transform, you see we have an opacity setting. So I'm going to lighten that to something like this. And I can do the same thing with the right cloud. I can go to the opacity setting. Okay, so now we can start to move down the timeline and animate. This is the timeline indicator, and this is called scrubbing. I can scrub to frame five. If I want to see more frames or fewer frames in my timeline, I can use this adjustable bar here. Sometimes it's nice to be able to zoom out and zoom in on the frames. I have set my animation to be two seconds long, uh, and I can see all two seconds, all 20 frames right here in front of me. I know I want to hold this pose for about five frames. And while the character is holding that pose, I would like these clouds to exit stage left and stage right. So the first thing I'm going to do is click all of these diamonds right here for each layer. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding a keyframe and I'm setting those in place at this particular point in time. By creating keyframes here at frame five and not moving or rotating or adjusting anything, I've created a pause. A pause is animation. To move the clouds, I open up one of the cloud layers and grab the selection tool, click it, move it off the stage. And I can do the same thing with these other clouds. What that does is remake the keyframe and change the position. If I would have scaled it or rotated it or changed its opacity, it would have automatically updated those as well on these keyframes. Now when I scrub, you can see that the clouds are leaving the frame. For my next pose, I'm going to go down to frame 10, which is at one second. And I want to make this character more upright uh, and kind of leaned back, getting ready to thrust the diploma up into the air. So first thing I'm going to do then is take the body and apply some pinning so that I can bend it backwards. This is the pinning tool. I'm going to scrub back to frame five because I want to insert some pins that will cement this position at frame five 
before I start deforming it. I can choose to pin here, 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 in the center and at the top. The three at the bottom are meant to kind of fix the position of the legs because I don't want them to bend. Now I can go down to one second, frame 10, and start bending. And this allows me to do some animation that will feel like frame by frame, but uh, is much quicker. Let's scrub and see what we have. When I inserted the pins, After Effects inserted this puppet engine, and as I started placing pins, here at five and down at one second, it automatically put pin keyframes in for me. Now I need to rotate this arm. So I'll select it, open it up so I can see what's happening. I have already anchored a keyframe here, so I don't have to worry about going back and doing that. I want the arm to rotate about this point, so I double clicked it, took me into this little tool, and then to get back to the composition, I click here. I did move it up a little bit, so I'll move it back down into place and get the rotation tool and rotate that back a bit. And I might even move it as well to about there. Let's see how that looks. I've used those same techniques of rotating and moving objects to complete this pose. Let's scrub the timeline and see how it looks. This is called pose to pose animation. We set keyframe poses and then we let the software create the in-betweens. I am going to do one more thing for this pose. and That is to move these clouds and scale them here behind my character because I know that the next thing that's going to happen is these clouds are going to burst out from behind them. So I'm getting that ready. If I hold the shift key down, it will scale it down proportionately. To complete the loop, I'm going to reproduce these keyframes down here on frame seven. To do that, I'm going to go to each object, select all the keyframes, copy. You can also use Command C. Scrub down to seven and paste. And so I'm going to reproduce this entire pose by doing this over and over again for each component. Copy and paste the pins on the body. We need to go into this effects puppet tool. Click on the mesh. Click on the deform. And we adjusted these two pins. So we have to open those up. And finally we get to their keyframes. And paste them. Now that we've finished all the keyframing in the animation, we can test it. Click here on preview and change this to loop and then you can hit play or the space bar now you saw that it froze uh, near the end and what that means is we have a pause where we don't want one right here so this bar right there controls the length of the animation that will play before it loops. And it also determines the length of the animation that's going to be exported. Now if we play it, we should have a smooth looping animation. That wraps up the demo. This is Bill Fisher. Thanks for watching.